Okay, hi everyone, this is SmithyQ, SmithyQ.com, and I'm back with another video analysis. Uh, before we jump in, I would just like to bring your attention to the position on the board. This is a, uh, this was reached in one of my recent games. It's white to move, and, well, just ask yourself, what would you do? We just take stock quickly, um, black is up a pawn. However, it's upside castling, and it looks like both sides are trying to attack the other. Black has some play in the center, but white's got open lines, he's got attacking ideas, and of course it is white to move. And so, what do you do? Do you just take on g7 to regain your pawn? Do you have something better? Do you have potential tactics? What would you do? So you can either pause, or I'm just going to give it a little bit of background. Is that, I of course have said that whenever I lose a game, I analyze that, I try to analyze it deeply, and then I, w I post the video up. This way you can see, um, well, A, how a 2000 level online rated player um, loses games, and then how I think about these uh, positions, and what I actually do to um, analyze my games and try and get better, try and make it so that way these mistakes don't happen again. And so, uh, we'll start from the beginning, and I was black in this game. So the opening was e4, d5, so we have the Scandinavian, and I guess this is, what, the uh, third time I've lost, or almost lost with this opening, as the case may be, so there's some definite growing pains as I'm trying to learn this. Anyway, uh, pretty standard, we both develop. And then he plays bishop e2, which in my view is already um, a slight inaccuracy, or um, if you don't want to call it a mistake, is that it's really letting black off the hook. It's not posing any problems at all. Right, the neural move would be something like bishop c4, or d4, right? And then what black generally does is that he does a um, a structure like this. Okay, we've got the bishop out first. But we'd play. Let's let me just do that actually. And we'd do something like e6, c6. Usually the knight comes to d7. Bishop goes to d6. And the reason that we put our pawns here on the e6 and on the c6 is because. White will almost always play d4, and his main threat will be to play d5, open things up. Because White has lean development, he's got more space, that's what White will do. That's a very common thematic idea. When White plays bishop e2, his bishop isn't on c4, so it's not targeting f7. It's not supporting the d5 advance. And so that gives me the idea to um, play something more aggressive. So I could, you know, just develop my bishop normally, play e6, c6, but that's not really punishing white for his mistake or his inaccuracy. So I played knight c6, and this is a much more aggressive system, and usually, if you just back up, it'll be found after something like this. Take, take, or white would play, say, d4, or knight f3 first. Because white hasn't chased our queen away with knight c3, that gives me a chance to play knight c6. Now I'm attacking the pawn, so if you just did this, that loses the pawn. That's not very good. So, usually it'd be something like this, 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 and this. And so we can see, and let's just castle for white as well. And we see that this position is, um, what's well, going to be crazy. It's only been six moves, we have opposite side castling. White can play c4 or knight c3 coming up, but the queen, it can slide over here. Or it could slide to f5, where it can help with the uh, the attack on the king side. e5 is possible. We could just attack, you know, g g5, h5, h4, something like this. Exchange off the knight, and this is going to be a tactical game. It's going to be great, and this is usually how it comes. Um, notice that White has the option of playing c4 immediately, which can really help his attack. That's really good for White. If you look at what happened in the game, though, is White has played knight c3 here and then bishop e2. So if I go for this same structure, so knight c6, d4, bishop g4, I'm gonna castle. Notice that he can't play an easy c4 to attack me. So that's um, better for me. At the same time, my queen is over here. I'd rather have it in the center or potentially on the king side if I'm gonna attack. So things aren't perfect for me, but things are still pretty darn good. And uh, he plays h3, I of course, I retreat. He castles, I castles. And so we've reached a good position. Um, this is fine. And already black is probably equal here. Uh, computer likes black. Computer likes white as well. It's just 
you know, it's going to be a game. And it's pretty exciting. There's been no mistakes so far. And I thought, at, up to this point, that that's exactly it. That this is, um, black is equalized. Black is doing great, and I'm going to be attacking on the king's side. White plays bishop e3. He's putting extra support onto his uh, d-pawn. And then I just lash out. e5, taking advantage of the pin. So, of course, the rook is eyeing the queen. And then there is a, the following fourth sequence happened. So he took, I took, takes, 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 takes. So we reached here. And here, let's just go two more moves. So he plays rook a d1. I could have exchanged, but why would I exchange when I can do this? Bishop d6. He plays g3. Of course, because I'm threatening mate. Rook h e8. And so this is really, um, this is the position I was aiming for. After he played e5, because just look at this. Both my rooks are on the central open files. My queen and bishop are staring at his king. Maybe I can get an h5, h6, try and pry things open. Or I could go knight, um, h5, takes g6, try and sacrifice this way. That's very possible. Um, if I sacrifice, so we imagine, um, white does nothing. Okay, we just put this here. I could just sacrifice, take, take, and just win the bishop. Or even better, I suppose, take here. He moves his king. Then I win the bishop. And so there's some interesting attacking ideas if white isn't careful in this position. Let me just delete the arrows. So this is exactly what I wanted. And at this point, I thought I was better. The reason I thought I was better is that I'm one move ahead in development. Again, both my rooks are open files. He has one rook that isn't. Um, our knights are pretty equal. His bishop stares at my king. My bishop stares at his queen. Sorry, his king. My queen's better because it's nice here in the center. And again, staring. Uh, it's also pressuring down the e-file. And I forced him to play g3. Which is a slight weakness. Again, I can potentially sacrifice on that square. So up to at this point, I thought, again, that I was better. But... The thing is, in order to be better, especially as black, our opponent needs to make a mistake. Right? If our opponent plays perfectly, especially as white, um, he can't be worse. It might be equal, white might not have an advantage, don't get me wrong, but he can't be worse. And if we look back at the game, the only real mistake that he made, so to speak, would be bishop e2, which isn't really a mistake, it's an accuracy. Every other move, d4 makes perfect sense. Kick my bishop back makes perfect sense. All right, developing. All right, after all these exchanges, did white make a mistake? Like, a real mistake, and the answer is no. And so what happened is, in this position, I thought I was better, but I'm not. It's simply equal. And so my main mistake in this game is... I, I push too hard, is that my opponent played queen c4, and then I'm thinking, again, I'm thinking I'm better. Now, if we look at this position, white's got a couple of things here going on. One, his queen is attacking the f-pawn, so that's something to look at. However, perhaps more concerningly, is that knight b5 could be coming. Um, knight b5 is hitting my bishop. My, um, it's also, there's some potential attacks down here on c7, so I'd be careful because he would be threatening me. And there might be mass exchanges. I don't want to lose my bishop. That wouldn't be very good. His bishop would be very good then because it's a wide open position. White also has another idea of potentially playing bishop f4. My queen moves, and then he just exchanges the bishop that way. And then that's going to be a pretty uh, boring position probably. The easiest move to do here for black would be simply to back up queen e6 i'm hitting h3 i'm hitting his queen obviously so he's pretty much forced to exchange and we reach in all honesty a pretty dull end game um black is going to double on the e file first or the d file it doesn't really matter pawns are symmetrical uh position is very very uh equal and it's be very hard to play for a win for either side, in all honesty, unless, again, one side makes a huge error. 
Note that there's never really a threat for white to win this pawn, except for b6, the bishop is trapped. And then king b7 comes, then there isn't a heck of a lot you can do. Knight b5 only delays the inevitable. And at the very least, you know, something like this, uh, rook a8, um, a, I get two, um, two pieces for the rook, and things would be great. So there's never really a threat for that. So we back up. So I was thinking, if we exchanged queens, it'd be very hard to win the game. And if I'm better, I want to try and win the game. And so I rejected exchanging queens because I thought I was better. Do you see what happened here? Is first I misevaluated the position. I thought I had legit winning chances, and I guess I do, right? I mean, there is potential attacks, there are potential weaknesses. At the same time, he's starting to win a pawn, and White's got his own attacking ideas as well, right? White's not doing nothing. White's not passive. And so because I misevaluate the position, that then led me to a very aggressive move. I played a6. Okay, okay, so it doesn't look like the most aggressive move, but the idea, of course, is that I'm sacrificing a pawn. After queen takes f7, queen f5, and then uh, king g2, of course, he's protecting the h-pawn. And so I've intentionally sacrificed the f-pawn. And I did this because I'm fig this is opposite side castling. My king's here, his king's there. So he's opened the f-file for me. He wasted a turn, moving his queen away from the attack, taking a tempi, and every tempi counts in these type of positions. So I thought that I could sacrifice a pawn. Let's do it. But then I need to find what my next move is. Okay, so I sacrifice the pawn. What do I do? Am I going to move... This rook over to the f-file now? I mean, doesn't the rook look better here? Where maybe it can sacrifice here, or can at least pressure on the e-file. The f-file is really, really blocked. It's hard to do anything with that. Is that what I want? <coughs> Excuse me. Because if I don't take... If I don't put a rook here, basically. If I don't do that, then the open f-file isn't doing anything for me. And I've just lost a pawn. That there isn't really an open file. So what do I do? I could just chase the queen, you know, away. But then it would just move right back where it was. And is my rook better? Am I going to double it? I don't know. It was here that I began to realize how um, difficult this position um, was. Or it wasn't so easy. I played h5. Which makes a lot of sense. I want to continue h4, weaken this. Because if I can exchange pawns, let's just say white does nothing. Take. Take. This pawn is very weak. Whoops, sorry. Whoops, don't do that. Oh my goodness. So this pawn is weak. Also, now I might go on the h file. This pawn is, but I have to move my queen somewhere. I could probably take on c2. That comes with check now. Things look excellent. So this was my idea. It was around here, though, that my calculation, I suppose, failed me. My opponent played rook d5, which is a very nice move, which I completely underestimated. The pro I can't take with my queen, of course, because it's defended by the knight, and I can't take with my knight because my queen is empty hanging. My original idea would be to just slick back here to h7, where I can further support, you know, an h4 advance or a g5, g4 advance, and things would be okay. But then, this move. And here I'm going, ooh, this is really ugly. White is threatening to just win the g-pawn, or he could just put his queen right here on g6. Uh, my queen would be completely be forced, if I don't want to exchange at least, it's here. If I do exchange, I'm just down a pawn. And I've got no attack at all. That's not very good. So after rook d5, I kind of went, uh-oh. And then I threw caution to the wind. And I just took on c2. So material is equal. He moved the rook over. I took another pawn. Now, I'll be perfectly honest. At the time, I thought this was near suicide. If we back up. I played a6 because I was willing to sacrifice a pawn 
to give up time to open lines against his king and to move his queen um, further away from uh, the attack. Now, if we just look forward, what just happened is I take two pawns. Now, there's an open C file, an open B file, all aiming at my king. Uh, my queen can't really help. It's out of the way. And my attack hasn't worked at all. Shoot. And this is, of course, the exact position that I shared at the beginning. So what does white do? The winning idea is rook takes d6. A nice tactic. And so uh, the simple idea is that if, he, if I were to recapture with my rook, he would move his knight, he's attacking my queen, there's also the rook and queen are now hitting c7 where it's threatened checkmate. My queen can't come here to defend because the knight controls the square. So I can't take it with the rook. I can't take it with the pawn, because the exact same idea now is discovered check, my queen is lost. At the same time, I thought I had a counter shot. I played rook takes e3. So now the position is getting, whoa, crazy. And so I'm taking advantage of the pin. I, material is equal. The rook is now hanging. If the rook moves, the knight is hanging. This rook is hanging. Uh, just about everything, in fact, is attacked and is hanging. I thought... It's hard to say, in all honesty. I suspected that I couldn't get away with this. But I thought that this gave my opponent the most chance to go wrong. That is, if you were to back up to that rook d5 move, the one option I, I talked about was how um, I could have just moved my queen all the way back to h7. But after rook g5, my opponent has incredibly easy play and um, very little chance he's going to lose. And I'm just going to suffer for 30 moves and probably lose anyway. So when I took rook takes c2 and then rook takes b2 with the idea of rook takes e3, I thought this gave my opponent a chance to go wrong. That he could lose himself in the complications. The thing is, though, is he looked one move further than I did, and he found a brilliant move. Queen takes c7. A queen sack. Except your take, knight b5, discover, double check, and then rook takes d8. Just about all of his pieces are attacked, but it doesn't matter. It's checkmate. And that's beautiful. It's absolutely brilliant and fantastic play from my opponent. I didn't see that. I saw some of the tactics earlier, but uh, it's, it's beautiful. We all want to sacrifice queens, right? And it's been a while since someone uh, did it successfully against me, so that's it. And so, when we look at this, when I played uh, queen takes c2, at this point I'm already lost. I'm simply lost, because after this, it doesn't matter where I move my queen, he has this idea of rook takes d6, and then the queen sack. Beautiful. So some of this comes down to faulty calculation, right there. Or that is, I didn't calculate enough. At the same time, I evaluated this position properly in the sense that I thought that queen takes c2, and especially queen takes b2, um, was losing. Or that is, I thought white probably had a win here, but it was hard to see. It was a double sack, sack, and then... I guess a triple sack. He sacks, I sack right back, then he sacks the queen. And I didn't calculate that properly. So that's purely on me. That's, uh, and that happens, right? That, that happens. It's not the easiest position to calculate. At the same time, I had a lot of time. I never even considered the queen sack. So that's sort of the chess, you know, um, pure calculation. But if we back up, the real mistake, really was right here, where I played a6, because I misevaluated the position. Now, to be perfect, I, if you put this position in the computer, it thinks a6 is okay. Uh, can I actually do that right now? So, got it up. 
And so it's saying a6 is a good move, it's an okay move, it's the best move, it's a 0 0.1 move, you know, it, it likes a6, it really does. And it's a fine, you have to look pretty deep to realize what's wrong with it, there's a lot of tactics. And the real problem, after a6, queen takes f7, is that the queen isn't really um, out of the game. You see the queen, uh, we saw it, it's still threatening things here. And that I need to probably spend a move to chase the queen away. But if I do that, then I haven't gained a tempi um, by sacrifice the pawn, I'm just down a pawn. It was this, a6, is really the mistake, because if I evaluate this position correctly, I don't lose the game. If I go, I don't think that sacrifice is working, the game is equal, white has an attack, I should just play queen e6 instead, hitting the pawn, and after take, take, like this, come on computer, I don't lose this game. Or my opponent would have to turn into Capablanca to, uh, to win it, right? He would, uh, it's a very, very equal end game. And so, so what I've learned from this game, uh, well, two things. One, I've got a just pure calculation. And in the critical position, I never thought about his queen sacrifice. But at the same time, I don't want to say it's kind of obvious. Well, it is now that I've, you know, analyzed this game for, you know, an hour or so. You know, but you want to consider every forcing move. And of course, this sets up a beautiful double check, and then it's a pretty simple mate afterwards, right? I mean, it's only, what, a mate in three? One, two, yeah, it's a mate in three. So it's, if this were a tactical puzzle, you know, I would have solved it in 20 seconds. It was a game, I didn't. So that's the, the one thing. But then the other, of course, is simply you got to evaluate these positions correctly. I look at this, and at the, at the time, I thought black was better. And now I'm going, that's that's ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. How can I how can black be better? Cause he's half a move ahead in development? Because there's a slight weakness against this king? It it is a weakness, but at the same time, I don't have a light squared bishop, so I can't take advantage of his light squares. And my dark squared bishop, it's staring at a pawn here. And so as long as that happens, like the bishop it can only sacrifice. It can't really attack. Right now, the pawn on g5. That'd be another story, obviously. I'd be just coming straight in. But it's not. And so, that was the error. I thought I was better when I was merely equal. I pushed too hard. And all of a sudden, I was worse. And then I was losing. So that's how I lost this game. And I, I think that's... A, that's important. Very often, especially I was playing some blitz, is people, they keep trying to win equal positions, and then they lose. And that's how I've won quite a few games. And that's how I lost this game. So, proper evaluation is key. At the same time, I think this was, this was an interesting game. Right? I mean, here it is. On move, what is this? Eight. We've got opposite side castling. Both sides developed. Things opened up. We got some tactics, got some exchanges, kept things interesting. Sacrificing a pawn, right? And things are good. Things are really good. Uh, but they're actually not. And that was too bad. And then a brilliant finish here. So that's that. Yep, so again, every time I lose, I'll make a video. Hopefully, I never have to make another video. That's a joke. Uh, you learn more from your losses than you do from your wins. And I've learned from this game um, how important it is to evaluate and how, you know, sacrificing a pawn. I think that would have been a very good blitz decision. Be sorry, we go back one more time, the critical position, a6. I think in a blitz game, you know, if this were, you know, we had one, three minutes to think, this is an excellent idea. Sacrifice a pawn, go forward. My opponent had to find some really good tactics to, you know, refute this. <coughs> but in a longer play game, I should have analyzed the sacrifice, you know, more. I, I relied too much on general principles, really. Uh, he can't, he can't take the pawn. He can't get away with that. But he did. 
and that's that. Okay, so that's uh, that's all for today. Uh, SmithyQ, SmithyQ.com. I'll leave a comment or you know like, subscribe, all that is great. Um, hopefully that was interesting, or you can learn from that, and. That's it. And the one thing that's actually frustrating with this game slightly is that up until this point, even with this move, um, the computer likes, is I think every single one of my moves was uh, the computer's top choice or the second choice by like 0.1 difference, right? Up till here. And then I lose the game in less than, what, five moves? Seven moves? It's like, ugh. Right? But that, that just goes to show the power of mistakes in chess. Right, you can play a lot of good moves, you know, but it's the bad moves. If you get rid of the blunders, uh, the rest take care of itself. Anyway, again, that's that. Enough talking from me. Um, I, I I wrote a blog post on this. I am moving, and uh, probably expect very few videos or blog posts for the rest of the month. I'll try and get one in if I can squeeze it in, but uh, things are a little bit hectic in my life right now. So that's that. Otherwise, uh, that's that. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Bye for now.